Hey everybody, welcome to The Daily Dose. I wanna sing a little something for you. We know that in everything God works for all good. We know that in everything God works for all good. Now, that little tune was something I remember learning at Bible camp where I worked as a counselor. And not only was it a singable song, it had great harmony when we were sitting around the campfire, and it was a good way to calm our campers down before bedtime after a rousing campfire. And of course, it has a great message. We hear in Romans 8, 28, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. But then life happens, right? And at some point you start to wonder what to do with all those not good things. And just like that comforting singable verse from the Bible, we look to other parts of the Bible to advise us. We maybe even just kind of flip through the New Testament say, thinking to ourselves, where is that part of the Bible? Where are those words of Jesus to bring us comfort? I mean, even 2,000 years after Jesus roamed this earth, we're still looking back at the words he said to us to find comfort and peace. I know that I've been, at times, I've been the one to say this, and maybe you've even heard this. You've heard someone say, well, Jesus said everything happens for a reason. There's clarity in that statement. It ends in a period and it covers, well, everything. And Jesus said it, so it must be something worth repeating. It's gotta be in this Bible somewhere. Maybe it's in one of those gospels I'm not so familiar with. Maybe a newer translation says it. Well, this week on The Daily Dose, we're talking about, wait for it, things Jesus never said. That's right. Maybe you're watching this at home and you're thinking to yourself, what? Maybe you're on a walk listening and you're feeling this panic because you've used that. You've said, well, Jesus said everything happens for a reason. Well, be absolved, but know that Jesus didn't actually say that. So now what? When someone faces something that's unexpected, a tragedy, when there's a tornado that rips through a small town, when you're just looking for something to bring comfort to someone you love, what does our story of faith have to say? Well, author Kate Bowler wondered about this question as well. She wrote a book with an appropriate title, Everything Happens for a Reason. But listen to this subtitle, And Other Lies I've Loved. Now, she was just 35 years old when she was diagnosed with stage four colon cancer. She had an infant at home, and she wrote in this book about her journey and about the conversations she had, the things people said to her while she was on this journey. And she writes at the end of this book, the only thing worse than saying everything happens for a reason is pretending that you know the reason. I've had hundreds of people tell me the reason for my cancer because of my sin, because of my unfaithfulness, because God is fair, because God is unfair, because of my aversion to Brussels sprouts. I mean, no one is short of reasons. And she continues, when someone is drowning, the only thing worse than failing to sh throw them a life preserver is handing them a reason. Think with me for a minute about this. There is something pretty cruel to believing that God would somehow cause her cancer. As my husband Hans has preached about uh, from time and time again, is that when he remembers when he was young, his mother died when he was just in fifth grade. And he remembers well-intentioned people coming up to him and saying, kind of hugging him, patting him on the back and saying, well, God needed another angel. And here he was, an 11-year-old, scared, and then suddenly trying to understand why this God who he'd learned about in Sunday school, who was supposed to love all of creation, was suddenly in the business of taking away little boys' mothers. And I think sometimes we have to be kind of crass about this, really take our logic to the nth degree to realize that that logic can sometimes cause so much harm. So what does Jesus say in the Bible in moments of tragedy? Well, we remember from the shortest verse in the Bible where we read, Jesus wept. Jesus' friend Lazarus had just died and alongside of the community that was grieving with him, Jesus 
wept. Jesus was sad. So what if we can simply be with someone who's suffering, simply be sad along with them? And we also read in the book of John, verse 33 from chapter 16, And in this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Jesus acknowledges there is trouble in this world. We don't hear a rationalization of it, the whys, the becauses. We just hear there is trouble, but remember, Jesus has overcome the world. And no matter how long you search in the Bible, you won't find that specific verse that says everything happens for a reason. Even that verse I sang about at the beginning, it's been kind of interpreted to mean that sometimes. Later, just a few verses later, we hear Paul, the author of Romans, say, In all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything of all of, in all of creation could separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. So what if, when we're talking with someone who is given a really terrible diagnosis, someone who's going through tough times, what if instead of trying to come up with an explanation, we simply showed up? What if we give that person a hug, show up when they don't even ask us, and demonstrate that nothing in the present or in the future will ever separate them from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Thanks so much for tuning into The Daily Dose today. We'd love to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Keep following us on social media for other series like this. Maybe go back and watch any that you've missed and uh, invite a friend. Tell them to watch with you sometime on cable access or on Facebook. Thanks so much for joining us. jealous for me Love's like a hurricane I am a tree Bending beneath The weight of his wind And mercy When all of a sudden I am unaware of these Eclipses eclipsed by Glory I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me and oh how he loves us so oh how he loves us how he loves us so. Sins.